What's up everybody? Welcome to Balkan Moto. Today we're going to do some carburetor tuning. Alright, so from last episode we ended up cleaning the carburetors and putting in some of the bracketry that keeps them together. In this episode, uh, we're going to continue with the rest of the reassembly and replacing and rejetting uh, some of the components um, to make things better and support what we're in, what, we're, what I intend on doing with the <coughs> uh, the rest of the motor modifications. So to begin, uh, here are some new parts that I bought. So this is a rebuild kit from uh, All Balls uh, Racing. Uh, which, you know, includes pretty much all the things that you need to rebuild the carburetors. I've also bought uh, a pack of four uh, Mikuni uh, main jets that are the size is 150. So we're going to be ch changing out the main jet. I only need two, but they were only, <clears throat> they were only sold in packs of four. Um, so these are the small, um, small round uh, main jets. The part number is the N102221150, or 150 is the size essentially, but that's the part number in the beginning. Um, so the stock uh, main jets were one. 12.5 and we're moving up to a 150 um, the reason for that is as you can see we also have pod filters so we're going to be going down that route and we're going to be doing a full exhaust on the bike so definitely need the main jets rejetted so um, before we start diving into these kits and what needs to be done let's uh, take a look at the components that we can reuse and uh, we will reuse all right, so the first item that we're going to take a look at is the main jets. So this is kind of the simplest thing. So we're just replacing these top bits in the, the jets themselves uh, from the 112.5 uh, uh, for the, or sorry, 110 for the front to the 112.5 at the back to both now be a 150. Um, the kind of main difference, the probably can see is let's see if I can show you this uh, let's use these filters as a background so if we look at these things you can kind of see how much bigger that hole is so that's gonna provide a ton more fuel so let's change these out um, and we're also gonna look at potentially removing this um, o-ring here and replacing it and mount these back onto the carburetors all right new jets are in new o-rings are on as well these are ready to go back on the carburetors and they go in the main jet locations so i'll just pin tighten and then give them a little bit of a tightening with the eight millimeter and they're good to go Next, let's take a look at the um, uh, idle jets. Um, the kit that I got did come with brand new ones, so I think I might just straight up replace them, um, just to you know keep things nice and fresh. Um, and uh, let's tighten these and see where. Okay, here we have the new um, idle jets versus the old. Uh, just a quick test to see that if they fit. Mm, the thread maybe doesn't seem as wide. No, they, they work just fine. Okay, so we'll add the new one. Uh, and then moving on to, uh, I believe this kit came in also. I have to double check these, but they might be main jets or they might be the starter jets. 
If they're not, if they're not the idle jet, the if they are the main jets, then we're just going to reuse the old uh, starter jets, and then we'll continue on with the uh, float bowl uh, setup. And it turned out that the uh, starter jets, uh, the additional jets in here, are actually main jets. So we ended up reusing the starter jets. Now on to the uh, filters uh, for the uh, needle valve set and the needle valves themselves. Uh, so these are the old ones here and these are the brand new ones. So as you can see, much better condition. Um, I think the filters are a little less restrictive so these ones seem finer these are a little coarser um i don't think that's going to make much of a difference because i don't plan on having dirty fuel uh, but uh, i will also at some point add a, a fuel filter on the <clears throat> the line coming from the petcock so this should be fine so let's pop these guys back in there get these guys uh, in with the um uh, floaters uh, and uh, see how we're going to configure them to be the right height. So I've replaced the uh, pretty much all the jets, replaced the filters for the flow bowl valves, the flow bowl valves, the two screws that go with it, and now I have the floaters in there. Now the one thing that remains is to configure these so that they're at the right height so the fuel gets in there as much as needed and not more or less. Too much, it will flood them, it will probably leak fuel everywhere. Too little, it won't be running. So uh, let's find the correct measurement for that and uh, set them up. All right, so after a little bit of searching, finally found the chapter that talks about uh, how to set the fuel level. And it seems like it requires a fuel level gauge, which seems to be just a hose with a tube that has markings on it. Um, then literally what you do is you mount the carburetors on the bike, turn the fuel on so that the flow bowls fill up and then you measure the fuel above the mark on the flow bowl cover which would be this one here yeah that's what it looks like um, I did read in the forums that one other way to do it is to adjust this for about 12 millimeters um, but uh, let's see if the current spec does match up with that, then I think we should be good to go. I measured them up and yeah, these actually end up right at 12 millimeters right now. So I think we're good to close up the full bowls and move on to the next pieces. So let's do that. Um, actually, for the full bowls, before we put them on, we're actually going to replace all the screws and the gaskets. So let's uh, figure out which one goes where and mount them up. All right, flow bowls are on. Uh, I ended up keeping the old screws just because it seems like the kit only came with three and three, and then the other three, are, the other four of these screws have washers on them that are different, I presume. So they're not actually for the same person. So I think these are just replacements of any of the ones that you've stripped. But I actually didn't end up stripping any of them, so I ended up reusing the old ones. Okay, um, next on the list, I believe the kit does not include the football drain plugs. So these are these guys. Uh, so I'll get these on and uh, put them, they go at the bottom here and here. So I'll get these in. And then the next piece is these big screws end up going pretty sure there and there uh, so we'll get those in and uh, next after that would be the um whatchamacallit uh these uh heater uh, ones and um, I believe at that point the bottoms are done. We're gonna deal with the fuel, the air fuel adjustments uh, screws that are under these plugs later on. Um, but once we get whatever the stuff goes here back in place, we're gonna flip them over and start dealing with the needles 
and the um, top part of the carburetors. So let's put these guys back in and the plugs and go from there. All right, all the bracketry and additional bolts and pieces have been placed on the side of the carburetors. I also placed the, uh, I believe that's the fuel overflow um, hose that goes up over the top and then down back to the bottom. So that should be good to go. Um, so now at this point, we're ready to flip this back over and start working on the needles. So let's take a look at what we're working with first. All right, so this is kind of what the setup was before. We had the needle, which had this plastic spacer and a shim at the bottom, this bigger spacer kind of in the middle holding everything in place, and then a C-clip going into this little groove uh, and another washer above it. And above that, there was the spring and then the needle holder. And then all of this went into the um, slider thing. Now, what we're gonna be changing today and kind of the way I decided to go is there were two ways to tune this. Um, so I could either add more shims at the bottom of the stock needle, or I can use these replacement needles that I got as part of the kit, the rebuild kit. And as you can see, the big difference here, they are the same length, the same width, uh, but they have these notches at the top. And there's five of them, and the middle one lines up with the existing one. So for my purposes, uh, essentially, instead of adding all these uh, shims and, need and uh, spaces at the bottom, I'm just gonna use the plastic one at the bottom, uh, the uh, main plastic one uh, in the middle here, and then the shim, the C-clip itself, I'm going to mount one up from there. So uh, on the second one from the top, plus the spacer at the bottom, that should give us plenty of uh, extra uh, fuel coming in. Um, with the stock one, if I had kept it, I believe the recommended kind of starting point for the tuning is to add one more of these shims at the bottom, kind of doing the same thing so that the needle stops earlier, it doesn't fully go all the way in. So. Either way, let's uh, set up these new needles onto the whole setup, uh, the way they're supposed to go in, attach them to the sliders, um, and uh, then proceed with the diaphragm at the top uh, and set things up. All right, so um, this is kind of the old setup and how that looks. So we have a little bit of give in there. And this is what the new needle setup looks like. I'm not exactly sure if this is correct. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this into the other one and then see how that fits in there. I'm pretty sure that this needle should stick out either as much, uh, well, it should stick out slightly less perhaps so that it pulls out more. Or maybe it's supposed to sit further in because the jet is bigger. But either way, let's try that and see how that looks. All right, so we have the old needle set up on the right here and the new needle set up on the left and you can see that this needle is actually thinner at the front perhaps by a little bit and it sticks out more uh, also I noticed that the spring with the new kit is a lot stiffer um, so that's what it's gonna look like so let's set this one up as well and then put the diaphragms on and put them on the carburetors all right one of the Full balls is in, up and down, it's good stuff. And uh, we have the other one ready to go. So let's put these back on. In terms of the top part, we just need the extra little bit of, um, uh, there's a little uh, gasket or o-ring that goes in here. And then just the lid kind of screws on. So we'll get those gaskets in and uh, close these up so that's the tops are also ready to go. And after that, we just gotta put on the cables that we took off initially. And uh, we're at the point where we are ready to put this back on the bike. But before we do that, we're gonna be doing some other stuff. All right, one cover is already on. We got the other one with the spring, the new O-ring, and the lid to go on it. Uh, 
I shall just gonna wash this and mount that back on. I've also used the new bolts uh, from the, the build kit just to make sure we have all fresh stuff. And uh, yeah, this side is also done. All right, carburetors are fully rejetted and assembled. The only thing that remains is for us to uh, drill out these plugs here and here in order to replace the um, uh, airflow uh, adjustment screws. Uh, and once we have those, then we can take a look at um, how to, uh, uh, what to put in their place. I, I know that they sell some um, adjustment screws uh, that have nice long necks so you can actually reach in and adjust it with your hand versus trying to do it with like some sort of 90 degree um, screwdriver. So I'll probably look for uh, one of those and buying one of those. Uh, but uh, for the time being, the work on the carburetors is uh, pretty much wrapped up. Yes, the carburetors are fully cleaned and reassembled. Uh, and that will be it for this episode. Um, and the next episode, while we're waiting for some uh, mixing screws, air mixture screws, um, I'm going to take this time to actually adjust the valves on the bike since the carburetors aren't on Doing the valve adjustment is pretty straightforward So make sure to subscribe hit the little bell for notifications when new videos become available Check me out on Instagram at Balkanmoto 2018 and make sure to check out Balkanmoto.com Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time